Alrighty, this is the lecture on Friedrich Nietzsche. So Nietzsche, a uh, 19th century German philosopher, um, very controversial. Um, he was um, a relativist, a really thoroughgoing relativist, was really critical and skeptical of any kind of moral absolutist perspective. Um, we'll see as we go through this lecture why uh, Nietzsche gets termed as um, a relativist. But he was um, very skeptical that um, morality could be founded either on human reasoning, because he didn't think that human beings were uh, fundamentally rational beings the way that people like Aristotle and Socrates and Plato did. He thought they were essentially emotional beings. Nietzsche thought that uh, people acted out of their own desires and uh, came up with the justifications uh, after they did the things they want to do. And he was a thoroughgoing atheist, so he didn't think morality could be founded on God either. So having taken uh, human reasoning out of the picture and God out of the picture, um, he really uh, did not believe that there could be any kind of moral absolutes. Nietzsche is uh, a lot different in terms of his approach to philosophy than anybody else we've talked about. Um, in addition to being a relativist, uh, he also uh, thought that human history should play a large role in um, determining the value of morality itself. Uh, Nietzsche sees himself as doing something really fundamental that he didn't think anyone else had ever done before. Nietzsche thought that everybody before him had just assumed that morality and absolute morality is a good thing. Nietzsche sees himself as questioning that assumption. He is challenging the value of moral values. And he wants to know whether or not morality, as we generally conceive of it, people like uh, Kant and Mill and these folks, whether this is something which has uh, brought mankind forward and been healthy for us, uh, or whether it's something, in fact, that has held humanity back and has harmed us in, in some ways. And he thinks in order to answer that question, we have to go back to the very beginnings of Western civilization. Um, so he wrote a couple of books about this in, in particular. Um, the book, Gian The Genealogy of Morals, uh, genealogy is studying the history of something, like a family genealogy would trace back the history of your family. Um, and along with the genealogy of morals, he wrote a book called Beyond Good and Evil. And we'll explain the title of that book later. Um, most of the quotes we have in our, in our book are from those two uh, sources. Um, you should pay attention to the um, introduction to Nietzsche in our book, on, beginning on page 211. Uh, gives a lot of the history uh, of him, background and all that. Um, and then uh, really sections uh, in chapter 17, sections 1 through 5 in particular are, are what we're going to focus on. Um, and those uh, really capture the main ideas that I want to focus on uh, from Nietzsche. So Nietzsche thinks that we have to study the origins of uh, Western morality. And he's talking here exclusively about Western civilization. So he goes back to the ancient Greeks and Romans, and he asks, did they have the same kind of moral system that we do today? And of course, we're talking here about 19th century Europe. Um, and Nietzsche says, if we go back to the ancient Greeks and Romans, what we find is they have a very different moral system than we have today. Um, he says that morality uh, for the Greeks and Romans really was about power. It was a class distinction. And he says the major distinction was between uh, those who were good and those who are bad. Um, the word good, he says, uh, simply meant to have power. Uh, it meant to be uh, wealthy and to be noble. And if you uh, own land, if you were rich, if you were a powerful man, then you were seen as being a good man. If you lacked those things, which the vast majority of the population did, uh, if you were poor, if you were a slave, um, then you were bad. And bad simply means to be without any kind of power. So uh, for the ancient Greeks and Romans, Nietzsche says, um, good is simply a synonym for powerful and noble. So he refers to this as a master morality, where the good are those who have power within society. They are the few. Um, the kings, the princes, um, the generals, the people who are in positions of power within society. And if you lack those things, uh, then you're seen as being weak. Uh, you're seen as being slavish. 
and you're classified as being bad. So we shouldn't think of these opposites of good and bad the way we might think of them today. Um, rather, we should just think of them as simply a class distinction. Nietzsche says, if we look towards moder modern times in Western society, what we find is that um, there's now a different moral distinction. It's no longer a class distinction uh, between those who are good and those who are bad, the powerful and the weak, but rather it's more what we think of today as a moral distinction between uh, those who are good and those who are evil. This is a really different uh, distinction than good versus bad. Um, the good are those who are uh, preyed upon um, uh, in an unjust way by stronger, uh, by stronger people. Um, the <clears throat> evil are those who do these horrible, awful things, especially to the weakest members of society. So you think about maybe the most evil um, type of person would be something like a child molester in modern society. So this is a, a completely different distinction than the Greeks and Romans had. And so uh, because um, he thinks of this as a moral system um, where the, the weak and the slaves get to define what is good, he describes it as a slave morality. So in slave morality, it is the weak who are the good, and um, those who, who do uh, inflict pain and suffering upon others are seen as being evil. Um, in the master morality of the ancient Greeks and Romans, Nietzsche says, um, the good simply did whatever they wished. Uh, and if it meant that they had to sacrifice troops in order to take, take more land or defeat an enemy in war, well, that's just what they did. Uh, there wasn't anything right or wrong about it. Um, it was simply uh, about power. Um, and so Nietzsche says, well, we've had is a, a complete uh, shift in the moral systems themselves. He calls this a transvaluation of values. So trans is a prefix that means to change. So you think like a bus transfer gets you from one bus to another. Um, so uh, what we've had is a change in the very moral systems themselves. So the master morality has been thrown out and replaced by a slave morality. Now, Nietzsche finds this very interesting, and one of the questions he asks is, is, how did this happen? It's easy to understand why the slaves would resent and hate the masters um, because of the pain and suffering that they inflicted upon them, but the problem was they didn't have the power to actually change the system. So if a slave revolted against his master, he would very likely would end up uh, being uh, killed or uh, imprisoned or, uh, you know, terrible uh, consequences would ensue. Um, and even if a slave did succeed at overthrowing uh, a master, uh, he'd probably just install himself um, and be even even worse uh, towards uh, everyday people, towards slaves than the previous master was. Um, so although uh, no doubt the slaves had resentment and hatred building up within them, and they wanted to change the system, they had no way of doing it. So Nietzsche compares the relationship between master and slave to being like the relationship between predator and prey. So you can imagine if you were um, a sheep and you were being preyed upon by uh, a pack of lions, right? You would want to uh, change that, right? You'd see this as being evil and horrible and awful. Of course, the lions don't look at it that way at all. This is just something which is uh, perfectly natural. There isn't anything right or wrong about it. That's just the way it is. Um, so the sheep would want to change things, but they don't have the power to do it. Um, and yet, Nietzsche says, in the battle between the masters and the slaves, the slaves have won. We no longer live in a world where um, powerful people can treat others just however they want to. Um, so Nietzsche wants to know how this has happened. And he thinks the key to the transvaluation, the changing of the value systems from the master morality to the slave morality, came about through Western religion, uh, Judaism and Christianity. Uh, Judaism and Christianity would teach that not only do we have our physical bodies, we also have a soul. And the future of that soul, which will exist for eternity, depends upon um, what kinds of people we are on this earth, and particularly how you treat other people. It's not a question of how much money you end up with when you die. It's a question of how you treat other human beings. Do you follow the rules? And Nietzsche says that 
um, the slaves were very drawn to the idea that there was um, a life in the hereafter and they had a, had a soul. Um, and so it's easy to see why they were drawn to Judaism and Christianity, along with all the rules about not killing and not stealing and uh, not doing all these horrible things that the masters have been doing to them. It's easy to see why the slaves would be drawn to this, but they somehow had to convince the masters of this as well. And Nietzsche says that uh, they did it through the use of fear. So the masters began to ask themselves, do I have a soul? Am I going to be judged by a God who's not going to judge me by how much land I owned, but rather how I treated other people? But the big thing Nietzsche says is guilt. If you can't, if you're a sheep and you can't force the lions to stop preying upon you, you have to make them feel bad about it. You have to make them feel guilty about it. And Nietzsche says that's what the slaves did. And so the master morality ends up being replaced by a slave morality. So in the master morality, if you think about the image of uh, like a symbol of what would make for um, a good man in the master morality, it would be someone who's about power. So somebody like Genghis Khan or Alexander the Great, um, people who want to conquer and uh, take over the world, right? Um, and so the good man... Um, was the noble man, the master, um, and was, right, very strong and powerful. Um, in a slave morality, the good man is someone who obeys the rules, believes in things like moral rights, is nice to everyone, you know, maybe somebody like Mother Teresa. And what Nietzsche wants to do in the title of his of, of the other book, Beyond Good and Evil, is he thinks that it's time to move past the um, traditional morality um, that has, had come to 19th century Europe, what he calls the slave morality, and he thinks it's time to move on to a new moral system. Uh, I'm going to end this lecture here, and uh, I will post it, and I will later post uh, a continuing um, uh, lecture on Nietzsche as well.